Hey guys, what up? Welcome to MRT Podcast. Today we have one and only Eddie Abu, IFBB Pro, Eddie Abu. Hi, Eddie. how are you doing guys? Hi, hi. Uh, introduce yourself, you know, because you got, you are uh, one of the guys that's been around in the sport like like for many decades, I, I guess. And and uh, you, you, you're you the only person can actually do this now, right now is introduce yourself and let people know who you well, are. I, I obviously you know my name is. I've been in bodybuilding. I started training when I was 15 years old. I'm 57 this year. So I started training when I was 15 years old. And then I, this is when I was at school. And then I saw a picture of, um, what's his name, Sergio Oliver in a magazine. And then I thought, I want to look like that. You know, he, he just looked incredible. This was in the 70s. And eventually, one thing led to another. I found some weights. In my, I was in a boarding school. I found some weights in one of my teacher's gardens. This is in Kenya. So I used to sneak in at night when he was asleep and, and, and do some weights. I mean, only, I, I, I knew three movements. It's concentration curls dumbbell presses and squats that's all i knew so i used to do them that's all i did and then um within six weeks people could actually see a change in my physique so i started charging people to sneak them in to do some weights um <laughs> you know at, at boarding school i mean you're gonna make you know you're just trying to make money that's how it was so i got the bag from then then since then i came to the uk i trained as a nurse just as a, as a, something to fall back onto in case the bodybuilding didn't work. And then I trained as a nurse and I continued doing um, bodybuilding and eventually I became British champion. And then I, my dream was to get on the Olympia stage. So I got on that stage in 2007. And then that was it for me. That was my, my dream. You know, I knew my limitations and so that was enough. So Eddie, remind us, you won your pro card, if I'm not wrong, was in 1997? Seven. Yes, I did, yes. Okay, yeah. I won it in 1997. This was a time when only one pro card was giving out a year, you know, and um, it, 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 it was a big thing. It took me five years to win it. We had people mm -hmm. like, you know, Dorian and Ian Harrison, you know, um, Linky, you know, what's his name? Um, what's that guy's name? Emery Francis, JD. You know, all those people were winning it. And um, wow. so I was, you know, when it got to my turn in 97, I won it. And then my dream was to go on the Olympia stage once. That's all I wanted to do. Oh, that's an, that's an amazing story. So, so guys, you don't know, I'll just have a little story about myself. Uh, I moved to England back in 2004. And uh, I was in the backstage of the British finals. And uh, this big dude walked through the backstage. And he, he asked me where was the access to the stage. And there was Eddie Abu. <laughs> and he was probably the biggest human being I haven't seen in my whole life. <laughs> he was probably about over 300 pounds easily. I've never was seen off, such off a season, big yeah. season was, yeah. I've never seen anyone so big in my whole freaking life, honestly. And that's how I met, I saw Abu for this Abu Abu for the first time. Uh, then I was, at the, I was at the 2007 Olympia. I went to the expo. And I saw okay. Eddie Abu on stage, and I watched you on stage, and I watched you at the expo as well. Okay, oh, I mean, yeah, thank you, man. I mean, I did, you know. So I've been for I've been following you around for a while now. <laughs> okay. Thank you. But then your name, I mean, often comes up, you know, like one of the guys that we interact with on social media. But yeah, I, I never. Yeah, and I really I've sure. got have another thing you don't remember in 2008 when I won the novice Mr. Mr. Britain. Eddie was one of the persons who suggested the Federation I should do the overall, but obviously they didn't let me do it because I was only novice. But Eddie suggested him I should they should let me go to the overall. Yeah, he because he, lo he must have looked incredible. I mean, he yeah. did he, he did was, he did yeah. that, he did that for me as well. Someone people told me. Cool. Yeah, I think you were sitting well, one or two rows just uh, behind the judges, and you saw me on stage yeah. instead. Let the kid go to the overall. Unfortunately, they didn't let they didn't allow me to go, and Jim Lewing won the yeah. overall in the end. But uh, yeah. thanks for that, Eddie. That was a uh, that was really that's okay. Really that's okay. I, coming yeah. from you, I must so have we, seen we go, something that I, yeah. yeah, you must have, you must have. You know, for me, it was it was great. You know, I never 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 got that like in compliment indirect from someone. So when I found out it was you, I was like, wow. You know, I must have done something right within this prep. Then, cool. Uh, so we're going we're going straight to our questions, Tom. What do you think? 
yeah. What, yeah. what you what you you go you go you go I go. Let's do this way. Okay, okay. <laughs> double team, double team. Um I'll like actually it. go with actually what was your biggest um off season weight and biggest competition weight? <clears throat> um my biggest competition weight okay, my biggest off season weight weight was three hundred and twenty pounds. Ooh. Roughly three hundred and twenty. But I couldn't carry it because my frame is not meant for that. <clears throat> I used to struggle to breathe. I was struggling to walk and I used to get sleep apnea. It was too much for me. And, I, and then I started getting panic attacks. So I had to drop down. That was my heaviest ever. You know, wow. in competition weight, I was on stage at 280 pounds. But wow. then I, I'm, I'm over six foot. So it wasn't, I mean, it, it, I was slightly off, but that was the heaviest I, I've ever been on stage. You see, I was usually at my best at about maybe 270. You know, that was, that was the best weight. Wow, uh, Eddie. So when when you I, I watched you at the Iron Ironman Pro, I think when you qualified, yeah, uh, if I, it was in two thousand and seven, on in February mm -hmm. two thousand and seven when yeah. you qualified, yeah. I remember yeah. that very well. Tony Freeman won. Uh, yeah. I don't remember who came second, but you came third. I don't know who came second at the time, but I remember to watch the the contest. Mark Dante. Mark Mark, Mark Dante. Dante came second. Yeah. So yeah. what's your what was your weight back then? Do you remember? Wait, I, I was just under 270. <clears throat> because I tell you what happened. I did the, 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 the um, months before that, I did the European tour. You know, the pictures that you see with Jay Cutler and um, Ronnie oh, Coleman, yeah, it was yeah, a yeah. European tour. And that we did three shows, um, like one in Austria on Friday. And then straight away, you have the um, athletes meeting where, you know, meet the athletes. You have a meal with them and then straight back into the plane. And then we went to um, Romania the following day on the Saturday to do the Romanian pro. And then straight after that, we went to Holland to do. So we did three shows in three weekends. And wow. then um, in, one, in one weekend, sorry. And then I wanted to, I, I got everything right in terms of my diet and my prep. I came to understand my body properly because mind you, I was working with Milos before that. And I just wow. parted company with him because I wanted to do my own thing. I mean what Milos was, was doing, Milos, I mean, I don't know what he's like now, but he liked simple sugars for carb loading. My body couldn't react well to it. So simple sugars just went right through me. So I did my own prep for those that weekend. So I put all the information together and then I decided just for one more time, I was going to do the Ironman. And then if I didn't qualify, that was going to be my way out of bodybuilding. And then, I mean, fortunately, I got it right. So I was about just under 270 on that stage. And um, the videos that you see, it was after the prejudging. And the prejudging, I was on. I know I was on. I, um, during the evening show, the pre pre evening show that you see, the videos, I'd had about like three Chinese and um, <laughs> three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so and I was that, under that... 270, yeah. And there was another, there was a very, um, a very famous popular video of you. That's the right word to say it. Uh, when they first did the wild, the wild card, if, if I'm not wrong, was back in 2006, the wild card. And you competed? 2005. 2005. And there's a video of you. On, yeah, there's a video of you on the backstage that went pretty viral because you, you like, you look like absolutely like gigantic and you were very cut and you were very cut. The, 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 that was a very bad experience for me because oh, right. I was, yeah, it was that, that, that weekend, that was one of the reasons why I decided to quit if I qualified in 2007 because I flew to the States and there was a delay in the flight and literally we were stranded somewhere for like five, six hours and that messed with my, my water and sodium loading and the direct and messed with it. So, by the time I got to Vegas, I was getting cramped. Literally, my whole body was cramping up. That was wow. like, we're talking about two or three days before the show. And then the night before the show, um, the paramedics suggested I go to a hospital. And I refused to. I wouldn't go. Wow. You know how stubborn you get. Then eventually yeah. at three o'clock, they forced me. I went to, the, um, to a clinic and they prescribed 12, no, actually six quinine tablets. You know, quinine, it's good for, good for cramp, you know? Because I wouldn't, I, all I had to do was drink a liter of water and I'd be okay. But I wasn't going oh, to. Because I'm a bodybuilder. 
Yeah. Can I just ask what what diuretic was it? Were you using Lasix or was it diazide or? No, I had, hadn't hadn't actually used diuretics at that time. It was just flight and the sodium oh, manipulation. You right, see, yeah, yeah. I hadn't even touched the diuretic yet. Wow, but right. mostly the diuretic of my choice has always been Adductor, the potassium sparing one. Ah, okay. right. You know, right. I, I didn't I didn't believe in the strong ones because I did it once and I I, I didn't like it. You know, I, I felt. I'm a nurse, don't forget, for first and foremost, and I know what directives are used for. And the amount that I had to take with the um, Lasix and the stronger ones, I, I couldn't deal with them. Yeah. Right, right, makes a lot of sense. So they, yeah, they, the, the... they got me, sorry, finish this. And then, so I nearly, um, I, 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 I could have hurt myself. So when I got on that stage, I was actually not at my best because I hadn't had any sleep. I had to drink eventually a little bit of water and you know, mentally. So I was the guy that beat me. David Henry won. David Henry was, won. Yeah. I, I was the favorite. I was the favorite to win. You were the favorite to win. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You were the favorite to win. Yeah. And I remember saw your video on the backstage, and everyone was talking about because you still look uh, really big on the backstage, and you look very conditioned. And I could see your face was very depleted as well. And as well. Yeah. But yeah. you, you were still when I saw the video. Okay, this is the guy who's gonna win. But. Yeah, as like you said, I, you probably weren't in your best, you know. Oh, no, but, uh, no, I was a bit soft, yeah. Well, uh, so uh, we, well, I'll go now. So, Eddie, tell us about, well, you're 57 now. I know you still work out, you know. Uh, I know you, you still, you still, you still go, you still go hard. And what's your training style? Or what was your style back then when you were pro, a competitive pro bodybuilder compared to now? Um. My training style has never really changed. I'm a volume trainer. I, I, I so so I think there's always the, the, there's a difference. I didn't get into, I didn't start training to be a bodybuilder. I started training, then I became a bodybuilder. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So so, yeah. so training is training has been my passion for for like decades. So I like to go to the gym and lift weights and do reps and get the pump and feel like I've done something constructive. I mean, whereas I tried the low rev stuff and all I felt was like injuries. And so I stopped, I'm a volume trainer. I like, I like 10, 15 reps. I'll never do anything um, below that tension. And that's what worked for me, you know, As, like I said, everyone is different. So what worked for me was the, the, the high reps. I like, I like volume, you know, heavy and volume. So can I, how many sets would you usually do? I see now you do crazy triceps and giant sets yes. and stuff yes. like that, which is great. Did you, did you do that kind of stuff back then as well? And Absolutely. When I was praying for a show, that's how I trained. Ah, it was right. intense because, because I didn't really believe, like too much cardio. So the way I saw it, that was my way of increasing my, getting my heart rate up, you know. So high reps, see supersets, giant sets, triceps, I was always doing them. You know, but, right. um, so my training style didn't change as much. I still did supersets of season, but not as much as I did when I did um, doing pre contest. Right, right. That's, so that's so what, what was your like kind of training split? Like how would you, um, would you do, you wouldn't do push pull legs, you'd actually isolate. Each. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, so this is, this is um, what I, I always argue with people, right? About push pull was something that we knew about in the 80s. All of us tried it. And then some of us decided that was not the way to go because one, it didn't create the physiques that we wanted. And two, there were too many injuries. You know, because I, so, so I, I, I like the, the split. That's a matter of choice, obviously. I like the split where I go to the gym on a Monday. Monday is shoulders and hamstrings. This, this was always my, my split. Mondays are shoulders and hamstrings and Tuesdays were just quads by themselves, okay? And then Wednesdays, I did arms and I did calves and I did abs. That's Wednesdays. Thursday was Friday, um, um, back. And then Saturday, um, Friday was chest. That was my, always my training split. Right. When I was a competing. very unique split yeah. right there. Very unique, completely different. What, what why shoulders and hamstrings then? Um, okay, so. And then why the, quads the next day? The, the, okay, so personally, it took me like two or three days to get the actual dongs in my hamstrings. Oh. And my hamstrings 
were very, very responsive. If you look at my pictures, you see yeah. I didn't have to yeah. work. Just like the same way, the same way like hamstrings and biceps were easy for me to grow. I stopped training my biceps because they were overpowering my, the rest of my body. So I've about two years and I've actually trained them because there's no need for there's no need for them. So I did um so hamstrings was almost almost a mediocre workout, if you get what I'm trying to say. Yeah. You know, it was it's a little bit not mediocre to hamstrings, I, almost like after thought, after shoulders, because the way I saw it at that time, I had to build my legs. I, I had a, this is what I was showing off, trying to um, squat um, 140 kilos without a belt, without warming up. And I did my back in when I was 21, I've still got the injury. So I had to train my quads really hard. That's why Tuesday took um, all of, you know, I did just quads on Tuesday, you know. But then, so Monday, I usually like if I went out on the weekend, which I used to do every <laughs> so often. Monday, I was going to be doing quads, so I'd wait right. until that. That was my only reason. It's a personal. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's, yeah, you know, it's 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 pretty amazing it's how someone has a completed training style than anyone else we know. You know, yeah, it's yeah, uh, yeah it's uh, yeah, it's definitely a value. A value content right there. Uh, Sorry, can, Tom, can I just ask one more? I'm I'm very intrigued again. Um, sets wise, like how many we we doing four or five sets? How many different exercises would you usually do? Oh, so <clears throat> this this is specific here. So on on um, I believe in working both the whole body holistically. Okay, so if I'm doing let's say back for instance, I will choose two movements for middle back. Two, okay, two movements yeah. for lats, lats, yeah. and then one movement for one movement for lower back. So that would be five movements right. for back. Yeah. Shoulders, yeah. I'll do um, a movement for an isolation movement for um, front, rear, side, and then a compound movement. You know, any kind of any other presses, and then I'll do upright rows because I believe all straps they were the best for um, so I combine shoulders with with um, traps. Okay. Right. So that's how, so, that, so it, it depends on, and then biceps, I do two movements because biceps, one for the long head, one for the short yeah. head. Triceps, triceps, I do three, triceps usually do three movements or sometimes four because I do one movement for the lateral head, one for the medial head, one for the, um, what's it, the long head, and then a compound one. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, so that's, that's how I train. I, I train every muscle, I just used to isolate muscles individually and then train them. Even leg extensions, when I do leg extensions, my, um, my feet will be turned in. Oh, to I'm, hit trying to hit, oh. I'm trying to hit, absolutely. So I train my body holistically. That's all, how we all did back in the day. Right. Very smart, I like that. I'll, I'll, I'll it sounds crazy basic. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 so much so basic and simple compared to nowadays, you know what I mean? Um, unbelievable. unbelievable. I'm glad. I'm glad. You... Can, can I can I just say something, right? So, it w it was basic, and we looked good. Yeah. We we built muscle, so there's nothing wrong with it. I I don't know why. I mean, I know people who come to see me, and you ask them, "What do you do?" And they tell you what they're doing. They're doing push for push for. And I said to them, "Look, we discarded that idea in the '80s because it wasn't. We were not getting the physiques that we wanted to create. So that's why we thought, hang on, hang on, we have to follow what." Um, Ronnie, um, what's his name? Lee Hen is doing. We have to follow what ah, Kevin yeah. Lebron is doing. We have to follow what Flex. That's how they were training. So we trained like that, and we got the physiques that we wanted. We used to do things like twists. We do them for yeah, ages. Yeah. I sit there five minutes. Do you know That's why we did that? School. We wanted to get our waist as small as possible. That was what we wanted to do. You know, whether it worked, I used to have a belt on every time I trained just to keep my gutted when I was squatting so that. I'll be 28 inch waist on stage. It's something yes, that I'm not yeah, seeing yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, I think it's pretty incredible for a guy with your with your size and your height. It's it's something unique, isn't it? Are you uh, six foot one in, then? Uh, it's probably, are you six foot one, Eddie? Yeah. So, well, I, my kids will tell you, no, your knees not. You know, because <laughs> they 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 they're, they're bastards. <laughs> I I I was when I had hair, I was six foot one, but. <laughs> no, I'm just six foot one. Listen, I was, <laughs> no, I'm just six foot and just a little bit 
just a tiny little bit over six foot, you know. Okay. Like we took, yeah, we took about a quarter of an inch. So yeah. So I'm six foot four with this. Oh. Uh, I like that. Uh, all right, Tom, you, you're you're going now. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> we're, 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 uh, okay, I'll I'll just go. I mean, I always think the the '90s guys are the, always like the biggest. Like love, I love the era and early 2000s. It's like the pinnacle to me. Um, yeah. What was your like kind of off season diet? Because you you everyone has got a lot bigger back then than now. Everyone seems to be way too worried about like. Instagram and looking good and stuff. So, what was your off-season diet? Okay, so so my wife um, has she runs my wife and daughter run a restaurant in the gym that I in my gym. So I can't lie about anything that I did in the past. <laughs> whatever whatever I say, I say they'll correct me. No, you didn't do that. So. I used to have to, because I'm, I'm naturally a very skinny guy. So when I started out, my off-season um, calories had to be 10,000 calories. Listen to that, right? Oh, wow. 10,000 wow. calories a day. So, and that's how the blending started. Oh. You know, you know, I blend everything. I blend my chicken. I blend everything. So that's how the blending started. I'm, I'm an, I was a nurse. So being on the ward and you couldn't eat, um, you know, you can't stop. You're looking after patients about to die. Hang on, let me let me just finish my chicken and rice. So <laughs> I wouldn't. So I'd, I'd blend like tuna and put pineapple in it. I put ice cream in it. I put ribena in it just to get the calories. Wow. Because I couldn't wow. grow. I, I was not. I'm not one of those people that grew quickly. I was a skinny guy and I had to put on weight. So I had to learn to slow down because I've got a mild ADHD. I don't know if you realize that. If you look at my posts, you can tell. My brain just works on very. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so in that way, I have I had to sort of learn to calm down, and then eat the food. So my off-season diet was like in the morning I'll have oats, like a lot of oats, either that and, and a protein shake, and I'll have usually um, some bananas or something like that in it, and sometimes I'll have peanut butter with it, just to get the calories up. And then meals two, three, four would be always be chicken and rice but what I would do was I'd blend the chicken right and chicken and then um with the green veg I blend it and then drink that and then I'd eat the rice separately and usually sometimes it'd work out it, it just depended on what stage of the um, year I was at and it's straight after a show I'd be eating more and then afterwards when I'm coming closer my diet didn't change that drastically I just removed all the sauces and just removed you know the, the um uh, what's it called the um you know, the sauces and the extras, you know, the packs of biscuit here and right. the ice cream and the, the donuts. I removed them. That's basically what my diet was about, you know. So, um, so Eddie, I'm guessing you're, you were, you were always had the very fast metabolism. So Yeah, yeah. I mean, crazy fast. It was just, it, it really was. It really upset me because my friends would put on weight so easily and I wouldn't. You know, that, that's why when I went on the gear, because nobody believed that I'd never been on, I'd never, you know, when I used to tell people, oh, you've got 20 inch arms, what are you taking? And I said to them, well, what do you mean? What, I'm, I'm not taking anything. They couldn't, they wouldn't believe me. Then, then eventually, when I decided to go in the gear when I was 26, I went from 15 and a half to 19 stone in, in wow. is it 12? It was insane. It was insane. Because wow. then, and it was three sustenance and two decals. <laughs> and I tell you the truth, 500 milligrams of deca and then, 700, uh, 750 milligrams of sas a week. That's what I did. And I went from 19 stone, um, 15 and a half to, to 19 stone. And my, I remember Jesus. my wife, I, I wasn't even aware of it because I, I, couldn't, I couldn't weigh myself. I couldn't put on weight. So I refused to weigh myself until <laughs> um, my wife, we work in the supermarket once. My wife says to me, yeah, you're out of breath. Why don't you just stand on the <laughs> scales and then see? And I, said, and I, I nearly fell off. And then, wow. then I, you know, I, I put on that much muscle. So what I'm, if you're, I think I had, did I realize that I had a little bit of genetics maybe to get to a certain point, you yes. know? Well, you got, you got to the Olympia stage, and you know, I guess everyone who gets to that stage has to be have genetics, you know, I don't know anyone, you, you know more than any, more than a anyone. certain amount, a certain amount of genetics. A, yeah. a certain amount of genetics, absolutely, I yeah. agree with that. 
Well, this is this is just like this. I is gotta say, Eddie, better. that's brilliant because I'm, I'm yeah. actually a very skinny guy, and mm. you know I hit like seven thousand calories, and I think that's a that's a lot. And then you're like ten thousand and blend some chicken. I'm like, oh. You do what you gotta do, man. You know, do what you gotta do. You know, like, I'm putting peanut butter in my food, and my, just all sorts of stuff. And then, mm. I, I, what I do you do you um, take like probiotics? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I always Rob got that. that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, um, digestive enzymes are important because if you're eating that amount of food, you know, I, I, I just didn't think my body could digest it. And so I used to always take, um, and project, don't, don't say anything, but sometimes I steal them from on the wards when I was nursing stuff, but don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good quality. All right, let's move on to our next one. Uh, well, yeah, well, we spoke about your off season, but yeah, the pre contest was pretty much covered that because Eddie just told us what he was doing in you know, in, in a pre, as a pre contest. Now, we're going to talk in a subject that uh, I know Eddie's very outspoken about it, and and uh, and it's and it's good because he's one of the only p- people out there that actually is, is outspoken about this subject. And I think when he does, he kind of helps a lot of people. I think a lot of people, when you out spoke about this subject, a lot of people think, oh, damn, I wanted to know about this, but I've been kind of ashamed or afraid to, to speak about it or to ask someone It's about steroids. You know? So uh, you just told us about your off-season cycle. Tell us about your, your pre-contest cycle and what, what's your view about the nowadays uh, steroid intake and what people do and stuff like that. You know, um, one of my um, former first guy, the guy I first started um, training, he actually passed away. You know, I was talking about the new band stuff. You know, I wrote a post about new band recently, and he died from the new band addiction that um, afflicted bodybuilding in the nineties. But um, he one, this one thing he always said to me. He said to me, Eddie, if you cannot grow on twelve weeks on, twelve weeks off course, that means you don't have the genetics to be a bodybuilder. Now, and I, I took it as Bible, you know, I took it as Bible. So I never did any PCT. I've got three children and I was still a bodybuilder because I had never given my, my, my body a chance to sort of shut down, if you know what I mean. So I, it was about taking minimum amount of drugs. I think when you've got a certain amount of genetics, you, you don't need that much. You know, you don't need that much. And I think, People are thinking that now people look on social media and they see their idols and they think, you know, I can look like that because the guy's not like me. And then before you know it, they're taking drugs that it's, it's, it's unhealthy. And uh, I, I think my concern is that it's not just the drugs that they're taking now, it's that whether we know whether they're real or not. But I'm open about it. I talk about exactly what I did. If you want to know what I took off season, I told you, sustenance needs to work for me. And then I got to a point and I realized that I couldn't take more than, I mean, um, 750 sustenance because I used to get panic attacks where I'd be in my car driving at four o'clock in the morning, literally with pictures of my kids on, on, the, bed, on the driver's seat because I felt like driving off a bridge. The, the, the effect that had on my, my mental state. And I didn't realize it until <clears throat> it got too much. One day I went to my doctor and I said, look, um, you know, I'm suffering from this. And he said, told me it was depression. He prescribed this, prescribed that, and then I, you know, I, my wife says to me, "Do you think could you be what you're taking?" So I thought, "Hang on, ease up a little bit," and then it went. Then I realized how much that um, the drugs affect you mentally. I think we don't. It, it might not be apparent, like in my case, but I think most of us suffer from it, but we don't realize it in one way or another. Well, that's some powerful stuff right there. Um, Ed, you know, recently we having a lot. There's a lot of bodybuilders um, that passed away. Uh, other bodybuilders that came came across having some health problems, um, probably provoked from past experience with steroids. What's what's your take on that? You know, I think we. This is very difficult because I, I I'm not making a lot of friends in the bodybuilding industry, and um, frankly, I don't care. I, 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 I don't actually care because I, I think that we need to be looked after. And that's, do you remember, let me ask you a question. Remember that um, Formula One, when, when Ayrton Senna, he had that crash 
Yes, back in 1994. Yeah, yeah I watched Absolutely, that. he had that crash and it was just horrific the the um what do you call it? the industry the formula they really went stringent just to prevent um that kind of accident from happening now we're getting people like um dallas carver is dead rich piano is dead luke yeah. sander is dead now okay so um you i saw you saw the post that luke sander's family put up about why he died we my problem is that I think we need to find some kind of body that can help us, can help. It doesn't matter what level you are as a bodybuilder. Just say, look, I'm thinking of doing this and doing that. And that body should include medical people, people with a psychiatric experience, like, you know, the mental health. Because I, I, was, I was a prep coach. You, I'm sure you know that. I was prepping hundreds of people. I mean, there was one of the UK BFF British finals where I had 34, 35 competitors who had qualified. Some of them hadn't, hadn't didn't compete, but at the finals, and I was getting them all ready. And then you look at them and you think, God, I mean, anything could have happened to them. And that night I couldn't sleep. The night before we can't sleep. The week before, I like, get up in the morning about 100 text messages, and I was that's what I was doing in my life. So, and then I saw the changes that was happening to these people in in terms of their mental state not just by the diet and the, and the um, obsession with the actual competing, but with, um, with the drugs, how it's affecting them. It was affecting them. And I couldn't deal with that anymore. It was just too much. And I'm just trying to say, look, let's find a body that, let's find, there's enough in the industry to, do, to be able to do that. If you say, before you run a show, we want safety. So you pay into this, um, this body and this body is governed by blah, 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 medical experts who are going to look out. You know, do you know what I mean? So if you want a blood test, you don't, you're not worried about having to go to your doctor and, you know, the doctor says blah, 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 and you're afraid you don't want it to go on your record. Just something, you know, find something that helps the athletes because we get nothing out of it. The promoters and the federations and, um, you know, they make all the money and the gurus making all the money. And then the guys are left with nothing. And because the drugs are very addictive, they compromise the way you think as well. Because what happens is you're not thinking straight. You know, you're basically dealing with an addict. And now that people don't come off, we used to come off, we used to do 12 weeks on, 12 weeks off. But now people don't come off, they do a scores, and then they go up, and they come down, they go up, they come down. And then you see a 21 year old in my, my um, gym saying to me, I can't get an erection. I'm thinking, God, dude, at that age, you should be able to sell some of your testosterone to people, you know what I mean? <laughs> do you know what I mean? At that, at, that, at, that, at that age, I'm sorry, I was, I was bashing one out about six times a day. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> oh, uh, awesome. Um, hold on a sec. I'm good. We're going to have to take a short little break and then um, I'll have to hold on. Yeah.